So these are some of the oral communication skills that I think podcasting can connect to. And I have to tell you, I'm very enthusiastic about podcasting. I think it connects with a large number of important um, expectations. And I think we don't do a very good job of helping students speak and listen effectively. I think we tend to give it a real back seat. If you take a look at these oral communication skills, expectation statements, you can see connecting, comparing, and contrasting. You can see identifying a point of view, which is also an element of writing. You can see organizing strategies, and then also using appropriate words and phrases. These are all things that I think are really useful for students in whatever future they may be pursuing. Under writing skills, I chose sort and classify information, identify and order main ideas and supporting details, and I think very importantly to establish that distinctive voice, which is something that I think uh, speaking and podcasting can really support. Also, the use of vivid and figurative language. Now, this is under writing, but as Victoria is going to point out to you, writing is an essential part of the podcasting process, and so it connects very well. And then I picked some from the Media Literacy uh, Collection. Uh, why different audiences might have different responses, identifying and order, ordering main ideas, uh, learning the conventions and techniques, which is important, identifying an appropriate form, and we'll talk about a variety of podcasting forms, and then uh, identifying the conventions and techniques appropriate to the chosen form. So uh, the other connection I'd like to make because of the fact that uh, those are all from, uh, from the language document is that it, it also connects really solidly to the achievement chart, not so much to knowledge and understanding and the thinking for those first two categories of the achievement chart, but much more to the communication where we see the expression on organization and communicating for different audiences and purposes and the use of conventions. That hits the podcasting activity perfectly. And of course, application. So without communication and application, you can't have knowledge and skills, or at least you can't have a demonstration of them. And that's why it's useful for us to take a look at the curriculum document to start with. So Victoria, let's start with this question. And um, the reason that you see um, Whole here is that I'm going to try to do some note taking as Victoria talks to us. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the characteristics of a good podcast? Well, actually, you touched on a lot of those already in your summary for the for the curriculum, Neil. Because really, I think one of the biggest things about um, doing a successful podcast is knowing what it is you want to communicate and how you communicate that is what follows from that very very central kind of idea which is you have to know what it is you want to communicate to your audience so I would say that first of all a good podcast is focused it's you have you know what it is that you want to do and you you have planned it so that you know how you're going to get those ideas across to your listener the second one is that a podcast is easy to listen to. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be easy in terms of content, but it has to be done in such a way that when people are listening, they're going to be able to get all of the concepts without having to go back. Because with printed materials, if you miss a point, you can go back to it and you can you can refresh your, your memory on what it was that you missed. But with uh, with the sp with spoken word and with podcasting, and uh, you have a chance to hear it once, and so it has to be very very uh, very clear and very simple. Doesn't mean you use small words, but it just means it it it's expressed in such a way that your audience is not going to get lost. Well organized. If it's uh, if it's well organized, then you're going to know where you're going with it, and your audience is also going to know where you're where you're going with it as well. Appropriate length is something that people frequently ask me. They say, "Okay, well, what is the best length for a podcast?" And I would say it really depends on on what it is you want to get across and your expectations of your audience. What I generally say is, if you're 
trying to reach an unconverted audience who might be browsing just randomly, you want to keep it shorter. But I've listened to podcasts anywhere from 30 seconds all the well, I wouldn't call it a podcast if it's only 30 seconds. It's more like an announcement. But anywhere from three minutes to an hour. And whether or not I stay with it depends on whether I'm interested, first and foremost. It depends on how listenable it is. Easy to listen to also means technical quality as well. So even though we don't want to get really, really bound up in in really arcane technical details, the audience and the people who you're talking to have to be able to hear clearly, otherwise they're going to give it up. And on the internet, there's a lot of competition for our ears and our eyes. And uh, if it's not intelligible, then you're going to lose your audience. And then the last part, is that I've referred to audience before. And audience is really, really an important concept that we in radio are reminded of constantly. And when I say audience, it doesn't necessarily mean an audience of millions or even dozens. It's who do you want to reach and how are you going to reach them and are you doing that successfully? And your audience may even be your classroom, for example. You don't have to play things on the internet. You can play things for people to listen to on uh, in, in the classroom. The audience could be your family. The audience could be your best friend. So it's like knowledge of who it is you want to reach and have and successfully reaching them, I think, is also a, qual a, a, a quality of a successful podcast. Victoria, can I break in for a moment here? I, um, sure. I, dis I disappeared somehow or other. I, I was doing my introduction and uh, found that I was no longer uh, part of the podcast, part of our conference. Can you oh. see this? Can you see my screen? On uh, I can see. Yep. Yep. You, you see the question? Yeah, you right disappeared now. on my screen for a while. Yeah. Okay. Have you already dealt with this question? It says number one there. Yeah, we could, I could take it again if uh, just to give you the, the, the no. five points no, so you can write them down. If you've already dealt with it, we'll keep moving. Have you already answered this one? Um, yeah, I, I think I have. Does anyone else have any feedback or anything that uh, you'd like to, Just going you'd over, like you to say? You said uh, focused, uh, keep it simple, and simple, you explained what that you meant by that. Uh, you mm -hmm. said uh, about audience, um, you know, keeping your audience. Um, those are three I remember off the top of my hand. Do you want to? Can you can you add the other two? Yep, uh, the an appropriate length, so making it right. suitable to whatever you want to get across, and also that um, a good uh, adequate technical quality. I would say okay. I won't say really excellent right now because you know we're we're be, we're just starting out, but still making it listenable from a technical point of view. Good. Organized, yeah, you said as well. In that case, how about this one? Can we talk about this question? Okay. Maybe. Uh, yeah, can... you know, this one I. Okay, can you hear me okay there? Yes, go ahead. Yep. Oh, okay, good. I did some thinking as far as the kinds of exercises that I've done with kids. Uh, over over the years and I think I've um, I've worked with grade ones I've worked with grade fives and sixes and I've worked with high school students so I think that there are it's, it's mostly a matter of degree of complexity with little kids for example one thing that I did once was uh, the teacher asked me to come in and talk to her students about pictures that they had drawn and what she wanted to do was show the pictures on the screen during a class assembly with a little clip of what the what her students said about their particular clip. So what we did was I handled all the equipment and I think with really small kids it's a good idea that to have one person who's handling the equipment but you can do a group exercise for example. Uh, for example what I did with the the kids in the assembly was I asked them tell me what your picture is about and they told me and it was generally about maybe 30 seconds or so and then I invited them to listen back and I said what do you think of that is there anything that you'd like to add and so some of them would say yes I think I wanted to say this so I was very surprised at how articulate these little kids were and so they didn't have to worry about uh, handling all the equipment the editing or anything like that 
I did that. And likewise, with small kids, what you can do is you can do a lot of listening things with them and have them play, play it back for them. You can do little radio plays. You can have them do simple little writing exercises for grade one and two as they're just starting to learn how to write. So I would say keep it really simple at this point. I was surprised by the grade fours who I was working with because they came in with little audio clips already. And this was six or seven years ago before kids had their own iPhones and their own recording devices. So one of the uh, assignments was to go and to talk to their mother about uh, something that they had identified as being significant, you know, as a kid. And we'd gone through that whole exercise. And so they came back and I was surprised. This one little girl actually came back with a snippet of music and said, I want you to use this in my intro and I want it to end here. And she actually ended it. She stopped the record button right at the end of the clip. So I was amazed at her production sense. So I think that, um, it's as the kids get older and as they're used to working with equipment, then I think that the uh, the equipment that they're using, they can do more of the editing themselves. As far as the complexity of the ideas, I think it's the same thing as when you're teaching them how to write stories and how to write essays. Um, the ideas start very, very simply when they're they're young and then they progress to the point where you're dealing with really complex ideas. Once I get to about grade 9, grade 10, and I start having them work with, with, uh, with the equipment, what I'll do is I'll set up parameters for them. One of my classes, for example, I said, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to do a short documentary. And I explained what a documentary was. You had to have other people talking in it, not just you. And there's sounds, there's music. So I gave them an outline, and I actually sent Neil a copy of the worksheet that I gave my students about what is your documentary going to be about, how many, who are you going to interview, and I, and I specify a very, very uh, definite parameters. Like, for example, a lot of my students at first when I said I want you to do a documentary, this is university level at this point, I said I want you to do a documentary, well what they did was they brought back a commentary. So then I realized, oh okay, I need to give some more guidelines here. So their idea, their um, their assignment was that they had to have two voices that were not their own. Their voice could only be 40% of the finished length. So that got rid of the idea that this could they could just turn on the microphone and, and talk. And also they had to have two sound effects. And any music that they used could not be copyrighted music because it was going to go on the internet. So I think by giving really specific kind of guidelines. I think that um, you can work with your students. Little kids, for example, one thing that's a lot of fun is to just go out and collect sound effects with them. Okay. And you can do little radio plays with them. You can do lots of things.